Uh, Russ Connor, and I'm from Bexhill. Bexhill. So your part, as I can see on your top there, the Ripley's Rippers, very yep. famous catapult club. Yep. So how you been getting on today? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right as it goes. I'd, um, I don't know how I did on paper because I couldn't, I couldn't see the. No, no one could. Because I couldn't see the paper, uh, but I did all right on the spinners. And how about the whole thing? So have you been to many competitions before and taken part? This is only me. Well, this is my first proper big competition. But within Ripley's Rippers, do you have like a competitive spirit where you? Yeah, do? yeah, yeah. We're, 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 we're at the club every week. Um, we're always competing against each other. And I come from quite a competitive background, so. Really, what do you do? What do you do competitive before? Uh, I used to fight professionally. Oh, did you? Um, oh, so you can block out this noise and get in the zone. Yeah. Oh, that's quite a good. St 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 yeah, stuff like that don't. It's not not really. really so you doing the um, so today obviously for the men we've got the ten meters and the twenty. Are yep. you taking part in both? Yep. What's your favoured one? Are you a ten or twenty? <laughs> I prefer ten, but I do better at twenty. Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah. Don't ask me why. I, I always do better at twenty meters because I'm used to being out in the woods. Oh right, yeah. So um, I go out in the woods a lot with a dog. I'm always and thinking about in the woods. So. Um, I tend to do better at 20 than I do at 10 metres. Ah, and do you shoot um, OTT, TTF? OTT. OTT. And what size um, um, steels are you using today? Eights. Eights. You said there's a lot of people using different from six, and it, we're using yeah. 9.5s. I don't know if thought it was a bit strange. Yeah, it, yeah, it dropped from 9.5. I'd still use 9.5s you know, outside in, um, in the woods and what have you, but, but indoors, eights just fly so much flatter and faster. Oh, uh, is that what it is? Because we're used to just 9.5s outside, because obviously yeah. you're, you're going out for a mooch. 9.5 is going to do what you yeah. need it to do, whilst yep. an eight's just going to tickle or bounce back <laughs> <laughs> get lost. Yeah, well, they, they, yeah, 9.5 is just going to do so much more damage to whatever you're at. Yeah, and do a good thing. Brilliant. So that's the day Do you think, um, obviously, there's been... It's quite a new thing for them. They're doing it every year, but they're learning more and more. But it seems to have a really good atmosphere today. Like I say, I've not been involved with, with, with competitive catapults for that long, really. Um, but it's definitely growing. Definitely, definitely growing. Um, it seems really friendly. I, I've met people this weekend that I've never seen before. Yeah. Um, everybody seems really friendly. I've had two dozen different people come up and check around who I've never seen. Um, so yeah, it's it's a dead friendly sport. Like I said, I, I come from you know competitive background, make, you know a lot of shooting as well, and it, and it's um, it makes a difference for people to be so friendly and competitive. That's good. So um, ca as you said, like catapult before was wasn't really that well known. People may have had a go when they were a kid or something like this, but it's really rising into the amount of clubs and competitions and the fact it's so accessible for many mm. people being so cheap in a way to start it off. Mm. Are you seeing that kind of growth? It, years ago, I mean, most men's had catapults from being, you know, from kids. You know, you, ne you never saw ladies you know, girls, the, you know, the older woman, we, we're catapult, it just weren't a, um, so people are starting at a different level, um, and, and the growth's definitely, definitely there. It's, every other day, like I said, we're getting 25 people every night at the club, from, from the youngest to kids, three years old, you know, up to, you know, some of the older fellas that we've got, um, and it's definitely getting bigger. Yeah, I've heard, because Ripley's Rippers is one of the really well, quite established clubs that mm. people talk about. You've got your shirts, but people go to them. We all, we've all known about you, and hopefully mm. we'll come and do a film on you. But I've noticed there's an awful lot of people that said, I've been catapulting for a month. Yeah. You yeah. know, which is a brilliant thing to see, because very few sports people are either proud of saying they've only been doing it for a month. Yeah. People are, I've been doing it for a month, but they seem really excited by that. Yeah, it's, uh, again, it's, um, I think it, it, one of the reasons is because it's a cheap. You know, you, you can. I've just started making my own natural frames because it, you know it's got nothing to do with how expensive your kit is or how expensive the band is. You know, you, you cut a natural or buy a cheap frame, put a bit of elastic on it, and go out and have fun. Yeah, well, this is I think is it because a lot of sports you need the trainers, you need the kit, yeah. you need everything. Here it seems like it's a choice to get the expensive catapults if you want to for the art and fair play if you do. Yeah. But most people could grab a catty or borrow one because you guys. Have some on site, don't you? Yeah, but yeah, I mean, um, we, we've had a lot of help off uh, off Simon Wasp, off slingshots. We've had uh, help off Reese Sayers. We, 
you know, with Bowles, we get um, Nick Egerty, helps us out with stuff. Um, so the, the, the club's doing well from that. And it, it shows people that you don't need to have, you know, expensive kit to be able to go out and have fun. And it gets people, especially the kids, it gets them away from Xbox and the TV. And, you know, I think, it, I think it's good for that. Get kids yeah. back out and people back outdoors. It feels like there's a lot of people who are very good at um, wanting to teach and pass it on as well, mm. whilst a lot of other sports perhaps they want to keep the information to themselves. Yeah. But in the catapult world, everyone wants to kind of help each other. Yeah, like I said, it's, I'm, I'm only five months in competitively myself. Mm. And I knew nothing before. I just used to plink at a few trees and, you know, stick a tin can up. I've learned so much in, you know, in five, you know, well, five months because everybody's willing to help. I've not, I've not come across, you know, one man yet that's, you know, that's held these cards to his chest. Everybody wants to help and um, it's just about having fun. How do you think if we started having leagues? I think it's a, you know, I, I, it's, it's a good thing, definitely. Yeah, so start pushing towards leagues and actually in the countries. Yeah, I mean, the more people can do, the better. It's just going to grow catapulting. Yeah. And if you want to compete, you compete. If you don't, you come down and watch. That'd it be gets brilliant. people into catapulting. Good luck. Well, highest level, I think we can get to the Olympics or at least have some country teams. And, you know, it'd be, it'd be good, nice. for, good for some of us who haven't had the athletic ability you might have had before to have a chance on the Olympic stage. It'd be fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. Let's well, talk. thank you so much for chatting to me today. Thank you. And good luck for today. Thanks very much. Right, there's a first of all, tell me what your name is. Uh, Philip Fields, but I'm more better known as Fip F. That's kind of an online name, so, but Philip Fields. Was that just the name you had for Facebook anyway, or have you just put that on for your uh, catapult? No, like... it's, it's a long story really from my <laughs> childhood, but I, it, that's how people know me in general, it's like my nickname, you know. Okay, and you are what team? So uh, Gamekeeper Pro Shop, the, uh, the best in the UK. <laughs> Obviously, Obviously. the only one with an American team member as yeah. well. Yeah, oh, we've got fantastic. Germans, we've got Belgians. Excellent, I love yeah. that. There's not a centre of a team, it's just a widespread. Yeah, it's a global it's thing. A global, global thing, team. that's amazing. Yeah. So tell me, first time you picked up a catapult, when was that? Uh, it was probably about three and a half years ago and it was a couple of lads were having a few beers, uh, a bit of a fire and everything and um, started seeing people shooting, it just intrigued me. Um, I've always shot rifles so I thought, you know, I'll give it a crack. Uh, I had a shot at a couple of coke cans, hit them and I thought this might be something I might be able to get involved in. So were you quite competitive with shooting or was that hunting wise for you? Uh, no, I am pre predominantly a hunter. Yeah. But um, when I started to attend shoots like this, the competitive side came out in me, you know, when you start, you know, when it's nice to come and just enjoy the company of everybody. But um, once you start seeing you get into the higher scores, you know, that competitive nature, you just can't do all about it. You just, you want to get on that podium. Do you still hunt and do you hunt with catapults? I do, yeah. yeah do? I, but, but my uh, my hunting style and my target style are different. I was going to say, they're two very different beasts really, but I suppose if you're hunting, you've got that instinct, and then yeah. honing that instinct into target yeah. takes a bit of discipline. It's a bit of a discipline, yeah, and a lot of effort, really. Consistent shooting is a whole new kettle of fish compared to a hunting scenario. Yeah, well, consistency in general is a difference in the kettle of fish. <laughs> so, you got catch box and everything in your house, or do you go to a club? Uh, no, I don't go to a club. I've got a catch box all set up in my uh, in my garden, and obviously, with being a hunter, I'm uh, I'm out and about doing it. I just set up targets, obviously in a safe environment, away from away from people, and that gives me opportunity to practice me uh, my target style. Do you practice every day? I used to do. I used to do. <laughs> when I first started, I bet I was doing an hour every day, at least. Nice. But these days, uh, three years in, and I've I've won a few trophies and stuff like that. I uh, I keep my training sessions quite short, so they're only like 15, 20 minutes, maybe four times a week, just to keep myself fresh. Yeah, why do people start doing that? It's interesting. I notice people who get into pro status and stuff are actually doing it less. They're saying, I'm doing 20, 50 balls max a day. Well, yeah. when they're starting off, they're there for hours and hours. Hours and hours, yeah. What's in China, GZK was saying it does the opposite way. Some of them are spending five hours a day training. Yeah, but that's because the price is like a hundred thousand pounds. Well, yeah, it might have a different, it might have a different uh, outlook on it if that kind of money would involve. But yeah. um, for me, the, the, I can't really learn to shoot any better at this point. It's just maintaining, you know. I'm maintaining because you could put a catapult down and you could leave it for a week. But if you want to maintain that sharp shooter, 
there might be a whisker on your face or yeah. something that, and you just got to maintain that it's almost like a scratch or a muscle memory isn't it, it I is. find on my finger here where I know I'm holding a pouch right I know I get that tingling feeling yeah. and then I've well, got to hold right. it for the release it's yeah. right so training training I think at, at pro status is more maintenance of what you can do you're not actually learning anymore you're just maintaining I think that's why the training sessions get shorter do you think then when it comes to competitions it's about holding your nerve and your breathing and shutting oh, wow. things down and mentally well, that is I would say 90% of the competitions um, you know everybody's a, a champion in the garden but as soon as you stand on the line everybody's watching pressure, in, pressure gets involved hands starts to shake you know, it's, it's a totally different beast, especially like compared to hunting. I find hunting quite relaxing, you know, and it, everything's more instinctual. But with targets and maintaining your shot, it's, it's, it's high pressure. Well, that goes essentially against instinct because you're in a building with lighting and there's people all around you who are trying to be quiet, but you can feel them not being quiet. Oh, yeah, yeah, it goes definitely. against everything that a natural person would believe in. Yeah, and yeah. It, it, sometimes it can put a little bit of doubt into your mind. Because you're thinking, I'm not relaxed, I'm not in my usual shooting state of mind. So, you know, pressure in a shoot is it's 90% of it. I shot um, the catapult club that I went to. They uh, had like some shooting, so I put the headphones on. Just and I didn't have any music, but it was hearing my breathing. All right, and okay. it was good. So I thought I'd bring it along today. But then today, actually, I was quite enjoying the fact there were loads of people around. Yeah, the buzz of it. Yeah, the buzz of it. So yeah. the first round was fine, but then the second one, when I got to meet people, I started to get dead nervous because I yeah. figured they're looking at me and they knew I am now. Yeah, there is a buzz involved, though. Like like you say, um, and I don't think it's all. Uh, there is a competitive side to it, and you want to do well, but. Just being amongst fellow uh, people who are interested in a similar thing and just just feeling that buzz, that's that's a good part of the shoot. So winning and losing is a nice thing. But to feel that buzz that you've had today. Oh, I mean, I was jumping up and down at the end of yeah, it, like I good. really was. But I think that people here, like, everyone seems to be really quite friendly. Yes, there's going to be some jealousy. Yes, there's some egging people on and stuff. But on the whole, it feels congratulatory and people want to teach each other. Do you yeah. find that in the community? I definitely, definitely do. Um, obviously, um, the, the shooting is the main part about what I got into it. But once I entered the catapult community and I saw how involved I was in caring for each other and you know egging it, uh, helping each other on and sharing information, I've never ever really been in a community of people that are so caring for each other and kind. It's true, you know, isn't it? It's <laughs> shocking when you first walk into it. It's everybody's so nice to each other. It's shocking. Yeah, and that's a really probably a sad reflection in our society, really. But um, I found that because a lot of it's done online, that there's obviously a lot of YouTube channels, Facebook groups. But the fact that it also goes over to people tangibly meeting each other yeah. is interesting because a lot of groups these days are just Facebook or they're just yeah, meet yeah. up. But it's a real yeah, there's mix. A, there's isn't a, it? a physical side of it, and you, yeah. another part of it is you're traveling to different towns, meeting different people. It's such a nice community to be in, and uh, I won't change it for the world. Yeah. So today in Cheltenham, this is quite a big shoot to be honest, isn't it? Like, oh yeah, people it, it from is, all around the world. Yeah, I literally, I think when they said, someone said there's 11 countries who've come here today. Yeah. I mean, that's phenomenal for the UK. Yeah. Uh, talking to a few people today and wondering if we'd be interested if there is going to be an England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales league or something. Yeah, well I think that's, that's definitely in the pipeline. I yeah. think that's definitely in the pipeline. I think there's going to be more clubs popping up. I think there'll be... Um, more competitions between the English clubs, you know what I mean? And I think the way that the, the sport's blown up over the, the last three years, that, that's definitely a route that's going to go down. It's huge, actually, because the amount of people you meet that say, I've been shooting three weeks, but still coming to a competition to get that experience. I've been yeah. shooting like, there's actually fewer than the say I've been shooting for five years. Yeah. There's a lot of newbies well, on there. The best thing about being a new shooter is to just get involved and get in here, and you're going to learn more by coming to a shoot and talking to other people than what you learn a year on your own. I've got to say, it's been really welcoming for someone who's really new to get up and do it and people not to feel judged and for people yeah. to be like, well no. done, at they least you They want you to do it. well, they want you to yeah, do well. Yeah, they really do, yeah. don't they? So a few people who were talking, the final point is about potentially getting this to the Olympics. Um, and I think it's a great thing because it's a very accessible sport for people who don't have much money or yeah. you could be anywhere. We have a friend that went to Chad and they took a photo of a guy with a slingshot in yeah. Chad in the middle of nowhere in a village. I'd suddenly think that someone like that could be in the Olympics representing their country. Yeah, it's a very accessible sport. 
and uh, I think that's something that can attract more people to it. And I mean, if it gets to the Olympics, that'd be uh, that'd be epic. Well, imagine you get to watch it in China. They televise the local shoots. Yeah, oh, you can China, actually sit at home and watch it. I think China's years ahead of where we are. You know, they, they've really pushed the sport in their country to to another level. Do you but, think we should follow that there, Paul? Yeah, I do. I do. I think um, they set a good example. They're organised, and if we can replicate that in some way and, and get that into the into the UK as a recognised sport that could lead to the Olympics. It's all positive. Well, seeing the amount of people that have stopped Gamekeeper John and Kiss Gustin today for selfies, yeah. I imagine in the future, maybe 10, 20 years, we're going to be seeing people walking down the street going, oh, that guy. Yeah, there's guy. the guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Brilliant. We'll, we'll come to China this November. Yes, yep. November. Yep. I'll, be, I'll be coming to China. GZK, so jumping right in there. Thank you so much. Come on, GZK. GZK, get in here. Come on, GZK, get in here. Get in there. Come here, come here. Yeah. Come here. I, I came okay. here. I came here to invite you, all you, to come to China in yeah. November. We want to come. We accept. Definitely. Yeah, we, we accept. accept. <laughs> we accept. We'll stay at your It house. will be a great <laughs> event for for the shooters all over the world. Yeah. It's yeah. a big event, yeah. and uh, we get a step to Olympic. Yes, a big step. Epic yep. step. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Definitely. Thank you so yeah. much. Let's <laughs> <Nice laughs> meet you, Phil. Yeah. Good. We'll be there. Take care. Thank, thank you. you. Thank so you very much. much.